in this video, I'm just going to talk about just being a bit more specific with your web scraping with Beautiful Soup, right? Now, I've imported requests, I've imported Beautiful Soup from BS4. We've got our page here, got the contents, I've turned the contents into a soup object, and we're going to find all of the A contacts. Uh, a tags, should I say, within um, the soup object and call it link anchors. Okay, so I'm just going to do all that, run all that now. Easy, we've got that done. And these link anchors, let's say that I don't actually want, um, you know, the text from them or anything else like that. I actually want to find out where they go to. Okay, so if we inspect this about tag, we actually have something called a href, and this href will take us to uh, yeah this 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 wherever this will link us to that href will take us to that href is what links us uh with the hyperlink there so if i click on it there you see we've got the same page right so hypothetically if we get these hrefs we should be able to um yeah just get all of those links and we should be able to put that into a list or do whatever we want with those links but basically if we can get this href we have the link address hypothetically right so a href is an attribute uh, of an a tag and to get an attribute we simply just put and i'll have to do it for every single one so i'll put for i in link underscore anchors we'll print the href so we actually print i because that's the item in the link anchor. Our actually link put ATTRS, which signals that we're looking for an attribute, right? We use these square brackets and then we put inside of a string the attribute name. And in this case, we want all the hrefs, okay? And by this method, we can get the href attribute. Now, unfortunately, these hrefs in HTML. Um, they're not specific hrefs, as in they don't contain the um, the full web address. They're just relative links. So if we copy and paste one of these, it actually won't take us to where we want to go. Right here we are. That hasn't taken me to where I want to go. Unfortunately, this is where I want to go because we're saying that we're taking ourselves to this website quotes.toscrape.com slash author slash Albert Einstein. So unfortunately, we can't actually use those hrefs. Not a problem, just something to bear in mind. I really just wanted to show you how you can get, you know, specifically a href, right? Now you're probably thinking, okay, that's cool. Don't really need that. What else can I do? Good question. So we can find uh, like a specific div. So if you actually look in here, we've got a load of divs, and we've got this div here, we've got this div here, we've got this div here. What if we just want to get one specific div, rather than saying find all divs or find first divs? We want to say find it by class, or I don't know, maybe find it by, um, what do we call it? Find it by, ah, uh, what's it called? ID, that's what we want to find it by. Well, let's inspect this. Let's see what the div class is, right? So we want to get the text of this A link, right? And I'm going to show you how to, first of all, get this div that's got a class. Um, just so you can understand how to get more kind of complicated uh, elements, more specific elements, right? And how to get the P tag from it and the A tag and then the text, okay? And you can see that bit by bit we can take from one from one div or from one element we can take some an element within and within etc and get to the very inside uh, of an element right or to the lowest child okay so we're just going to say that what's it called again call md4 call da -da -da, md da -da -da, four oops i need to use underscores there otherwise it thinks something bad is happening we're going to say soup dot find and we're actually going to find a div because this is a div and then we're going to put a comma because we want another argument and the argument we're getting is actually this attribute argument and the attribute that we want to get and that we want to put into these um, curly brackets is actually a class right 
and we're going to use this as kind of a dictionary. So we're going to say our class is then equal to, and it's going to be equal to this call dash md dash four. Okay. I'll print this as well, just so we can see the result. It's got md underscore four. All right, and let's see what happens there. Okay, so we've actually got this div here, right? This specific call md4 dig that contains this p uh, tag, that contains this a tag, that contains this text. Now, we could actually get the text from this simply by printing call underscore md underscore four dot text. Because login is actually the only text in any of the uh, children inside of this div, right? But that doesn't show us how to get, you know, something inside of something else, right? Well, actually, once we have, you know, a tag, any tag, doesn't really matter what it is, we can quite easily get the children. I mean, there's actually a children argument, but I'm not going to get use that to get the child. We can actually just say that call underscore p, we'll call it because we want to get the p tag, is equal to whatever our object is. So we're going to say call md underscore 4. I'm going to say dot find, and what we want to find is a p tag within it, which hopefully should be this p tag. I'm going to print this out as well, just to see if that's worked. Okay. Hopefully it has, but, you know, who knows? Stranger things can happen. And you see we've got that p tag. Cool. We don't want the p tag, we want the ahref. So we can say call underscore p underscore a is equal to call underscore p dot find. And quite simply, it's the a tag. We'll print that. So I'll print call underscore p underscore a. And we should get just the a tag now. And you can see that it's trimming a little bit off every time. It's returning that a tag. It's not returning the whole p you know, and it's not returning the whole div. It's just returning what we're asking for, which was the p tag and whatever's in it. And now we're asking for the a tag and whatever's in it, which is just this a tag and the login text, right? And now just to be really coy, we can say print call underscore p underscore a dot text. And that will give us the text attribute of this a tag. No, however, you know, you can still just use call md4.txt okay so in this manner we can actually get you know very very specific tags uh, we can get them by a specific tag with a specific class we could use we could use this argument here in find all and get every single div with a class in fact i'll show you how to do that and i'll show you why it's relevant because you're probably thinking this is you know a cool trick but what can i actually do with it okay so let's go back to our website and you see these quotes in the boxes here, right? All of these things. Let's imagine that we want every single quote on this page. We just want the quote text, the actual, you know, quoted words, essentially. And we also want the author, right? Well, if we find every single div and we get the uh, text, for example, this quotes the scraper text is within a div, right? So we get every div and we get all its text. We'll get this, okay? And this text isn't a quote. We'll get the login. We might get other things as well that we don't want, right? So we want to just get all these quotes. So let's have a look, you know, what they're contained in, right? And if we inspect this, we can actually see that they're inside of a div that's got a class of quote, right? Now, I'm assuming that every single one of these boxes uh, is a is is a div with a with a class of quote. I could be wrong, and just understand that when you're web scraping, not everything is always the same and in order. Some things are unique and some things are weird. I'll I'll get to that in a later video. But anyway, so if we want to get this quote text and these authors, or we just want to get what's in these boxes in general and nothing outside of them, we can find all of these quotes and put them in a in a variable, I guess, right? So we can get all these quotes. So we can say, I don't know, all underscore Q underscore text, meaning all quote text, right? And we can say that that's equal to what? Well, we can say that it's equal to soup dot find all. 
And what we want to find is a div. And we want it to have a class of, which we'll put in these curly braces. I think the class is quote. All right, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure it's quote. Don't quote me if I'm wrong, eh? So let's have a look here. Yes, it is quote, spelled like that, okay? And I'll print this out as well. So I'll print all underscore Q tags, all right? Now, let's print that, shall we? So you can see, I get these tags. Let's try and find the start of one. So here's the start of a div here. And where, where does the div actually end? That's a good question. The div ends here, right? So this is a whole div, okay? Uh, specifically a whole quote div. Inside of this div, we've got a span called with a, with a class of text. And it seems that the span contains the quote, right? So a woman is like a tea bag. You never know how strong it is until it's in hot water. So let's have a look where that is, just to confirm it, okay? And there we go, by Eleanor Roosevelt. We got this here. So we can see that if we want to get the text, the quote text, we're going to have to get all these span classes, right? And if we want to get, for example, I don't know, the actual author. If you look at this small tag here, inside of the small tag is text, and this text is the author name. So we need to get this small class, right? Now, I want to test this out before applying it to every single one. I want to test that this works. So what I want to do is I want to get the first item in all Q tags, right? And the way I do this is quite simple. You know, in any array, you just do this, okay? And let's just have a look at that. Cool, cool, cool. Now, we want to find... We want to dot find this, this, this span. Oops. Might want to do it a bit better than that. So we want to find this span. And we want to find this span with a class that is equal to what? And uh, let's have a look. Text, right? Text. If we go into here, you'll see exactly what I mean. This span text actually contains uh, that text there. There we are. So we want to get the text from that. So let's see what that gives me back. And it gives me this span. But the problem with this is I don't get the text. I just get the span. Okay. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm going to add block text to it. And this should return the text. Right. And you see I've got the text. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without our thinking. So that should be the first quote. And it is, right? So you can see if every single um, div tag with the class quote has a span tag with the class text in it. And the dot text of that will give us the quote itself. Then if we apply this to all of the tags, we'll be able to get all of the quotes, right? So... I'm going to do just that. First off, I'm going to make an empty array called quotes, right? And then I'm going to say for i in all underscore q underscore tags, we're going to append to quotes. So we're going to say quotes.append i dot find span we want the class to be of text text and we want the dot text of that okay that's what we're going to append let's see what happens when we run this let's see if quotes works so there's no error that's good and then we'll print out quotes shall we so we'll print out quotes let's see what it contains and now you can see I've got an array of all the quotes. So the last one is a day without sunshine is like, you know, night. So let's see if that's the last quote. Yeah, it is the last quote. And the one above from it is the T-Rag quote. 
Yep, so it seems to be in order. Let's just check the first one is the world as we have created it. And yeah, you can see basically we've got all of these uh, quotes now in an actual, um, in, a, in, a, in an array, right? And we got the text, yeah, so we don't have to fiddle around with these items so much. Now what do we need? We actually need this other span, uh, not this other span, sorry, this small of a class. So we're going to say, we're actually going to make uh, another array, and we're going to call it authors. Let's say authors is equal to an empty array. Let's say for i in all underscore q underscore tags. Don't worry if this is confusing you. I will um, I'll explain it just after doing this authors. Let's say authors dot append. I'm going to say I dot find. I'm going to find this small uh, what they call this small tag with the class author, right? And we want to get the text of that. And we're going to put it in the authors. Um, what do we call it? The authors uh, array or list, whatever you want to call it. And now we've got all the authors and all the quotes, right? So let's go through that. Let's recap. So we've got all our Q tags, which are specific divs, essentially every single div with the class quote. So we got all of these boxes, basically, right? That's what we did to begin with, okay? Then we printed that out to see that they're just gigantic tags with tags inside of them. But we realized that inside of that tag, there's a span with a class of text. And the text of that is equal to the quote uh, that's inside of each of those divs. So if we can get the text out of that, for every single uh, item in the all Q tags array, and we can add each quote to a quotes array, we can have all of the quotes in an array, right? So we can have all of these quotes separated out from these boxes, okay? Then we found out we can do a similar thing by using the find small tag with the class of author and getting the text of that, and we can get all of the authors, right? Now, to test that this has worked how we think it has, and we've got all of our authors and all of our quotes in the order in which they appear here on the screen, what we can do is we can simply say print, and we're going to print the quote is, just put one of them there, plus quotes zero and we're going to say and the author is da, 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 and we're going to say plus authors zero and if this comes up with the quote by albert einstein and albert einstein's name we should see that it's worked right so we've got the quote, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. And the author is Albert Einstein. Right? Now that's correct. So we can confirm that. Now, what we can do here, because hypothetically the length of authors and quotes should be the same, but I'm going to print the length just to make sure. So we're going to print the length of authors. And we're going to print also the length of what's this called quotes right and if we get two different numbers we know something's not quite right we've got two numbers that are exactly the same so we've got 10 authors and 10 quotes right so now what we can do is we can say for i in authors or for i in range whatever we'll say for i in authors now we want to say for we'll say for i in range i think it's range 10. i don't know let's see for i in range 10 i think that's going to give us one uh, zero to nine basically print 
Uh, what is it? The quote is. The quote is. Plus quote I and and oops, one little space and the author is plus authors I. Let's just hope this works, eh? Could uh, could come out terribly. All right, so that is the last quote. A day without sunshine is like you know night. Right, and you can see that that's correct there, that's fine. Um, woman is like a tea bag. I've not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So where's that? Thomas A. Edison, Edison, whatever you want to call it. You can see essentially that this has worked, right? And so let's say we wanted, I don't know, this 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 quotes, quotes to scrape has 5,000 pages and we know it does. We could make a for loop that got every single page and got the quotes and the authors of every single page and appended them to these arrays, right? And then we could get 5,000 pages of quotes and authors and we could do whatever we wanted with that information um, in our own time. And that is really the power of web scraping. And that's why it's important to sort of understand where appropriate how to, you know, select very specific things when you're scraping right I'll go over the whole of this again okay so we can get our attributes here by you know using whatever item we've found or whatever items we've found and getting the item dot attributes and then we put the attribute in these square brackets to get that attribute so the hrefs it was now if we want to find a specific tag we want to find a specific attribute that uh, uh, a specific tag with a specific attribute so that could be class href src whatever we simply use the tag in the dot find or the find all function we use a comma and then we put inside of these curly brackets whatever our attribute is whether that be class or src or whatever then we put one of these colons to separate it and the value that we want that attribute to have okay and we can find things by attribute like that and we can extract elements within elements by finding them essentially like this within the element itself. We can find all elements that have a certain uh, attribute with a certain attribute value. If we just want to have, you know, certain parts of a web page that we take out. And if we find all of the, you know, whatever item within that and extract the something from that specifically. So here we extracted every single one of these uh, divs with the class quote, quote, and then we extracted the text from every single span with the class class text, just so we could get those quotes. Because we don't care about this tags information, we don't care about this by bit, we don't care about this about, we only care about this, right? We're, spe we're selecting specific information, right? So we can do that quite easily there. You can make a for loop, so you can you know append this information to wherever. There's all kinds of things you can do with this information. And I just wanted to show you essentially how, you know, being more specific with a web scraper can get you very specific parts of a website you might want. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.